Halo Combat Evolved was a groundbreaking game at the time of its release in 2001. It revolutionised first person shooters on game consoles and also brought with it a huge epic science fiction universe. But if we go back further to 1979 there was another science fiction masterpiece that would be hugely groundbreaking and influential on future science fiction media. Of course I'm talking about Ridley Scott's Alien, an absolute classic doing something that hadn't been done in cinema before, at least to the success this film had, that being blending genres of science fiction and horror. Up until this point the big sci-fi hits were primarily Star Wars and 2001 A Space Odyssey. Star Wars in comparison to Alien is a comfortable family film of good versus evil, whereas Alien is a serious grounded tale of human curiosity and greed going too far resulting in tragic consequences, with little the characters can do to stop their demise to a superior species. Then, in 1986, Alien would get its first sequel, that being Aliens, directed by James Cameron. Like the first film, it was a huge hit, and also incredibly influential, but important to note in this film, it was more action focused, it did still retain horror elements, especially in the superior director's cut of the film, but the point of me making this video is I want to talk about the similarities between Aliens and Halo. I'll mostly try to focus on the second film in the franchise, that being Aliens, and the first game in the Halo franchise, that being Combat Evolved. Now we can start off with the opening of Combat Evolved, where the Pillar of Autumn has just come out of slip space, arriving at Halo. Visually, not just the Pillar of Autumn, but a lot of human spacecraft in Halo look very similar to the Salako in Aliens. This is the ship that is used by the Colonial Marines. The ships share an industrial look to them, sporting dark metallic colours, the UNSC ships and the Salako are rough around the edges and both look like a huge weapon which is further emphasised by how the majority of UNSC ships are built around a MAC weapon system. The similarities extend to the ship's interiors, in particular the hangar bay seen in the opening and closing segments of Aliens and the beginning of Halo. If we take a look at the characters, Sergeant Johnson, who is one of the most important characters in Halo, has an almost identical resemblance to Sergeant Apone. They both moustache lipped, gung ho, smoking big cigars and chanting comical one liners to their marines. Not just in how they look, but how they speak and behave, the two have very similar voice lines such as this one. Let's go people, they ain't paying us by the hour, let's go, hit them out! Hit them marines, go, 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 the corps ain't paying us by the hour! It's quite clear that Sergeant Apone was the influence for Sergeant Johnson from the looks and charisma, but a similar influence can be seen from the clone marines in general. If we take a look at their armour, we can see that in the original rendition of Combat Evolved, the armour worn by the UNSC Marines does look similar, relying on metal plating to cover the chest and shoulders and upper arms. During the scene in Aliens, when the Marines are using a dropship to get to the surface of LV-426, the interior of a dropship and where the Marines are seated looks similar to how the interior of the Pelican would later be designed. Furthermore, the personality of the UNSC Marines mimics that of the Colonial Marines in various scenes. I'm telling you, I got a bad feeling about this drop. You always say that, Frost. You always say I got a bad feeling about this drop. Okay, okay. I got a bad feeling about this. Boy, you always got a bad feeling about Captain something. Stark. All right, people, let's move like we got a purpose. You heard the lady! Move like you got a purpose! You can also see similarities in the technology used by both marines. I already mentioned the interior of the Colonial Marines dropship, but the exterior of it also shows some resemblances to the Pelican, and also behaves in a similar way, being able to travel in and out of the planet's atmosphere, and carry a ground vehicle for deployment. Both forces go into battle with action cameras, with grainy footage, which we get to see in both Aliens and Halo, with both scenes having a lot of resemblance in themes. The first time we see the Marines enter the Xenomorph Hive is shown on these action cameras, and in Halo Combat Evolved, the first time we properly see the Flood is through the action camera of Private Jenkins. The weapons used by the Marines also share some features, namely the digital ammo counter, the pulse rifle has its ammo counter on the side whilst the MA5B has its ammo counter on the top of the weapon, and another feature the weapons share is the high capacity magazines, with seemingly no explanation for how each rifle can hold such a large amount of ammunition. Although perhaps the pulse rifle's high ammunition capacity could be attributed to it firing the caseless ammunition, similar to the M7 SMG introduced in Halo 2 which also has a high capacity magazine. It's not just the marines from both franchises that share similar traits, but the main star of Alien, the Xenomorph, has a fair bit in common with the Flood. While the nature of how the Flood spreads is influenced by the Parasite from the Vang series of books, 
which by the way after doing some research seems a lot more disturbing than how either the flood or the xenomorph operates we can't deny that the xenomorph definitely influenced the idea of the flood at least some aspects of it we can see this with the overmorph and the facehugger and the flood pods and the infection forms both the facehugger and the infection form in a lot of cases come from a type of egg or sac not always, as we have seen with Alien Romulus or in Halo Combat Evolved, they come from carrier forms, but later in Halo 3, we see infection forms growing inside sacs, which are not too dissimilar from the Overmorph. The infection form also leaps at potential hosts, much like a facehugger launches itself at a person's face. Both parasites will make an attempt to subdue and enter the person's body, the facehugger opting to place a proboscis down its host's throat, and the infection form will attempt to enter the host, usually by ripping open their chest, but the face or the back or just about anywhere on the body can suffice. Interestingly, while doing some research, I found this piece of concept art for Halo Wars 2. Here we have an image of the Flood Blightlands. These are areas totally taken over by the Flood, but if we look closely, we can see eggs that show a much stronger resemblance to the Overmorph than the infection form Flood Pods. Furthermore, with the Flood, they work in a hive mind state ruled by a grave mind, and the aliens also work in the same way, being led by the Queen Xenomorph. Ultimately, the Xenomorph and Flood are not entirely similar in all aspects, namely the Xenomorph appears to be more uniform with slight variations depending on which creatures spawn them. The Flood, however, can take many forms from the host they infest and even being able to create pure forms from Flood biomass. It's not just the Flood which have similarities with the Alien franchise, but even our beloved Sangheili share some resemblances. In Halo 2, you can encounter an elite counsellor who has been imprisoned by the Brutes. The elaborate helmets that they wear resemble the carapace of the Xenomorph Queen. It's possible this design was used to convey the elites are of some sort of important status, which they technically are. This was the first similarity I noticed between the two franchises when I first played Halo. And while I was scouring through the web for images of elites, I came across this image. It's titled Elite Early Study. I couldn't find out if this was meant to be in-universe or if it was a concept art, but this image of an elite looks very similar to a xenomorph, minus the tail. The spikes on the back are similar to the dorsal tubes found on the xenomorph, and its elongated head found on the elite is also very reminiscent of the xenomorph's head. It also looks far more feral and animalistic in its stance. And one final thing I wanted to talk about for this video is how Aliens starts and ends. At the beginning of Aliens we see Ripley asleep in her cryopod with her cat Jonesy in which she is woken up by salvagers. Then at the end of the film after the Queen has been defeated herself, Hicks and Newt all get into cryopods. And while it doesn't take place in the same game, at the start of Halo Combat Evolve, just before we take control of Master Chief, we see him asleep in a cryopod. Fast forward to the end of Halo 3, and we see him getting back into one of the destroyed Ford and Dawn's cryopods. Was this intentional? Maybe not, but the imagery is similar. You can't help but notice it when doing an analysis like this. So there we have it. A few similarities between the two franchises and maybe even a few aspects of Alien that would become a direct influence on Halo. So this was quite a fun video for me to make as Halo is my favourite video game series and Alien might be my favourite film franchise. What other things did I miss that you would say are similar between the two franchises? Write them down in the comments below or even if there is another film or TV show that influenced Halo I would love to know about it. If you enjoyed this video do please leave a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. But until next time Spartans I will see you in the next one.